Hallelujah! Still a racist! Brandon Coleman's got his second touchdown of the night! Throw from yep. Nova to Carrizola, he's got it! Touchdown! And it's tipped and intercepted! A fantastic win for Kyle Flood and company. We are now thrilled to be joined by the head coach of the 4-0 Rutgers Scarlet Knights, Kyle Flood, who is here along with our Rutgers and Big East analyst, Marco Battaglia. Talk a little RU football. Coach, you ranked in both polls for the first time since 2007, 4-0 for the first time since 2006. So I know when you took over this job and you got to the bye week, this is exactly where you thought you'd be. Well, when I took over, we were excited about the team we had. And it's certainly great for our fans, for our university, for the students. You know, the rankings and that type of stuff is neat for all them. But really, we're focused on getting a little bit better on our bye week, which we just finished, being 1-0 and next week. And ultimately, it'll be the awards and the rankings we earn at the end of the year. Those are the ones we're really looking for. Look at this man. He knows exactly what to say right off the bat. That's a coach it's right there. 4-0. He walks around with a bodyguard now. Absolutely. I know. You're the bodyguard, as a matter of fact. You guys, high school teammates. Absolutely. That's very funny. I was not thing. coming on today without Marco. Is that right? I don't blame you. I, I've almost made it a point where I don't come on without uh, Marco. Obviously, I'm a little younger. Just a little. Uh, no question. No question. <laughs> so what do you think in terms of the bye week at this point? You talked about using it to go forward. I mean, you know, Marco, you brought up an interesting point. Talk a little bit about how you don't like bye weeks. I always felt bye weeks kind of got in the way, kind of distracted a team. Um, physically, if you were banged up, you go through it. You, you just stay on the momentum. Momentum with a 4-0 team is very important. I always felt sometimes... A team got distracted. Distracted how? Guys tend to let up. You can't let up when you have a, a successful team, especially with a 4-0 start. What do you think, Coach? For us, we don't make the schedule. The league comes out with the schedule. And I think as coaches, it's our job to, to maximize it the best way we can. This is a unique year. I've never had one like it in my career. We play four games, which we just did. We have a bye week. Now we're going to play another four games. Then we have another bye week. Then we play our last four games. So I've described it to the team as almost three mini seasons. Mm. What we try to do in the bye week, get a little bit healthier, which I think every team at this time of year needs to be able to do. And then I, I challenged every position group on our team to pick one thing and make sure that when we finished our practice week, which we did on Thursday, that we would be just a little bit better. And, and then we'll start our game week on Sunday and, and work towards being 1-0. All right. Now, I know we were all surprised by the win in Arkansas. I'm sure Coach wasn't, but you have some questions to ask about Arkansas. Well, I thought the Arkansas win was as, as big a football game as, as I've seen Rutgers play in a very long time. I Just going into that place is a tough stadium to play in. It's an SEC team, and everyone knows the SEC football is, is big dog. Going in there, especially with your quarterback, I thought I thought Gary Nova played an outstanding football game wherever it was. But to go into that place in Arkansas and play the kind of game he was, he played. Tell me about a little bit about his poise and control of that football game. Certainly, a very challenging environment to go in and play a football game, and they, and it was it was a great experience for our team, our coaches, our fan base. We've seen the improvement with Gary from the spring. You know, a lot of the improvement we saw in the spring and training camp ultimately was what won him that job. Mm. And we've seen the improvement throughout the first four weeks of the season. Now, sometimes that improvement only shows itself in practice. And, but last week it showed itself during the game. And I think the other, the other side of that is the receivers on the other end did a great job for Gary in terms of catching and then making runs after the catch. You talked about that maturation. Talk a little bit about that, that relationship now that he has with those receivers. I mean, you arguably have the best receivers in, in the conference. Those guys are playing very well. Talk a little bit about, about that relationship between Gary Nova and his receivers. I think, that, I think the maturation process, I think it shows itself really in, in two key spots. The, the first one, and probably the most important one to me, is Gary's willingness to throw the ball away when he doesn't have an open receiver. He's not forcing the ball, and I think that's why he's done a good job protecting the ball. The most important thing you do as an offensive player. And then the other part of that would be the amount of different receivers we had catch passes in the last two games. You know, different, different receivers with big games. He's spreading the ball around, which tells me he's not locked in on one guy. He has confidence in the receivers as a group. It's not just one person that he's got confidence. That's key. Coach, only team in the country that has won three games on the road so far. That's incredible. You know, you've got some new coaches on offense. I know you were calling the plays last year. Dave Brock, new guy, Norris Wilson. How have they helped bring in Juwan Jamison and develop Gary Nova offensively? Because you guys just looked on dynamite. You know, you looked great last week. It's, it, it was the single most important thing I felt like I had to do as, as a new head coach was hire, hire the right staff. Yeah. And I feel like the nine assistant coaches that I was able to, to hire, keeping Rob Smith as the defensive coordinator and then hiring eight, eight people from some different places, I, I'm really pleased with the way that they have meshed together and also meshed with the players. I think they've done an excellent job 
uh, on offense of working the different playmakers into the game plan. You know, Juwan Jamison is a, is a guy who is one of our better playmakers on offense. You know, Arkansas did a nice job loading the box early in the game, made it very difficult to run, and Coach Brock comes up with a play call that ultimately gets uh, Juwan loose in the end zone for the first touchdown of the game for us. That's great. Coach, job. where does this win rank historically in, let's say, the top five, top ten Rutgers, win, like, greatest wins? I don't know if I can comment on that right now. You know, we're in the middle of a season, and I know the, the media and the fan base, I'm sure they, they have weighed in on that extensively, and I think that's part of what makes college football great is their passion for that. I felt going into the game that we had a mature football team that would be able to handle that environment. I felt like we had a really good group of 18 to 18 to 22 year olds and they had a really talented group of 18 to 22 year olds and I thought it would be a really competitive game and I felt like ultimately we made enough plays in the game to win. Where it, it, it stacks up historically, you know, I, I'll leave that for you guys. You know, <laughs> well, we're just pleased we were able to be one and zero at the end of the week. Well, Coach, I rank it top five. I think obviously the first <laughs> game. Now that you mention it, Rutgers, yeah, what, what's your top five? Rutgers Princeton. Us. I think we all know first college football game of all Absolutely. time. I, I rank that as number one. 1869 national champion. There you go. Look six, at this man four. with his history. Six four. I think uh, Babe Ruth came in to relief uh, <laughs> Ty Cobb. But I, I really feel the Louisville game was number two. I think. Modern day football, TV, exposure, I think that was the game that put us on the map. You were there, you know I'm about proud that game to say very I was well. A part of it. Absolutely. I also think the Tennessee game in 1979, uh, Tennessee was ranked number two at the time. Rutgers went down to Knoxville and did what, you know, handled their business. Uh, 1988, Penn State. It was 70 years before we beat Joe Paterno. I think he was the coach in 1918 as well. But uh, <laughs> I think this is top five. I think your, your win against Arkansas puts it right up there in the top five. Well, I know this. The most important game we're going to play is next week. I knew you were going to say that. Spoken like a true coach. That, that's why this play. But in honesty, it's very important for you, obviously, to keep your team in that mindset, isn't it? It is. And I think every game brings different matchups, different personnel, different schemes. And you see that there, there really is very little carryover effect one week to another when you look around college football. All right. We aren't done with Coach just yet. He's going to stick around. He will help us preview next week's game between Rutgers and UConn. The Big East City pregame show back after this. by Marco and Coach Flood right here. And then, we, you know, we see the conference. And we know this has been a season of turmoil for the conference, mostly for off-the-field stuff. Teams leaving, teams coming, all that sort of stuff. What do you think the state is right now of Big East football on the field with the competition that you see? Every year, year in, year out, the Big East Conference shows itself as having a, a tremendous amount of parity from top to bottom. And I think when you watch Big East football games, when we play each other, you, you're going to see games that are decided by 10 points or fewer every week. They're going to be physical football games. Now, it, it's interesting because that's one of the things you guys always point out. You know, Marco, you pointed out the competition is always very good no matter what's going on off the field. Right. It's just a matter of senior leadership, consistency in play with your special teams players, your, your, your top players, your top tier players. It's, it's all about consistency to jump to the top of the conference. Right, and that's something you guys have noted. Yeah, and, and Coach, I know you don't want to talk about last week's game against Arkansas, but, but how important was that to tell your guys you can go and play against the SEC team and the SEC conference that everyone's been talking so much about? I think that win was so important for the Big East Conference as a whole to show that you can play on that national competition level. I think any time you take your team on the road, you know, I felt going into the year that we had a very mature team, certainly more mature on defense, more established players on defense, guys like Kasim Green, Steve Baharna, Scott Vallone, et cetera than we had on offense. I think there have been some, some players on offense who have emerged in the first four weeks. But anytime you take your team on the road, it's a great challenge. And when you're able to come away with a win in a venue like that, it, it can only add to the confidence of your football team. All right, let's take a look at the, uh, your upcoming schedule. I know you know it, but we want to refresh our viewers with it. And there it is, UConn coming up next. And, you know, first, don't offend uh, the alum over here, Mr. UConn himself, but, Marco, you were talking about Paul Pasqualoni's success <laughs> against Rutgers historically, how do, you think, how do you guys think that factors into this? Well, Coach Pasqualone, even when I played at Rutgers, was always obviously a defensive-minded coach, and he would always come after us. Uh, he's 12-2 and two, historically, head-to-head -head against Rutgers. So I think it's going to be a same old Paul Pasqualone team. They're going to come out, they're going to look to get aggressive right away, but I think, uh, you know, Rutgers is no pushover anymore, and we haven't been for quite some time, so I think... Uh, we're going to handle our business. What do you, what do you see out of you sitting next to me? Either. Yeah, absolutely. What do you see out of you? Well, right a tremendous amount of respect for Coach Pasqualoni and what he's done in his career. Certainly as, as respected a person in this part of the country with the high school coaches as there's been. I've known that since being a young coach and, and recruiting the area. 
When you play a Paul Pasqualini football team, you, you know they're going to play great defense. You, you know they're going to be a tough physical group, and they're going to be extremely well coached on offense. It, it's going to be a great challenge for us next week. Coach, we appreciate you spending your bye week Saturday with us. We hope to see you again down the road. Good luck with everything. Congratulations on the early success. I appreciate you guys having me. All right, Thank Rutgers you. head coach Kyle Flood, everybody.